more of a conspiracy of stupidity, it seems like, is running the planet. Uh, that, I, would, I think that is the strongest conspiracy on the planet, is the conspiracy of the stupid. Yeah. To prevent schools from educating their children, because they want their children to be as dumb as they are, to prevent television from putting anything intelligent <laughs> on as much as possible. <laughs> what is your feeling about the, the fact that the Kansas school boards have denigrated the teaching of Darwin's theories in high schools? Well, we need a source of cheap labor. The third world doesn't provide all we need. We need people who speak English right away to start with, and for some of the menial labor. You have an educational system that is a total, complete joke and a failure. And then that's where we get the people who clean the toilets and mop the sand, and clean up the streets and so on. Kansas is going to provide us with that. I think it's very gallant to them, and I really appreciate their offer. So I'm all for Kansas. Goodness, Toto, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore, though. <laughs> Will something like the X-Files or Art Bell's conspiracy radio show becoming so popular in American culture? Conspiracy theory obviously is being talked about everywhere, and, and people are, are not trusting the government or the media or this and that. On the other hand, they believe anything. <laughs> well, that's, I blame that on the churches and the ignorance of the public at large. The major thing you should learn in any decent education is to how to judge and evaluate new sources of information. If I say to you, uh, the people in the next apartment are all uh, zebra striped and they fly around uh, three feet above the ground, how are you going to judge and evaluate that? Uh, well, there are all sorts of one way of what does it sound plausible to you, in other ways, how honest do you think I am? And there are lots of other ways, but most people have no standards of evaluation at all to judge between something that's plausible something that's totally impossible, something that's possible but not probable, something that's probable but not yet proven. They don't have those distinctions because any teacher in the United States, and I think in most Christian countries, any teacher who's caught trying to teach children how to judge statements, immediately the whole school board, all the parents, and especially the local clergy come down on his case and he or she gets fired, thrown out on their ass, has to find work in another field. You can't teach children to think it's against the law. So, of course, nobody has any standards how to judge whether Martians are in the White House or General Motors owns the president, or whether there are fetuses of extraterrestrials at Fort Bragg. Or, uh, they have no standards by which to judge, so they judge by whoever they heard speak most recently. Oh, that must be the truth. I just heard it five minutes ago. They don't have an attention span that goes more than ten minutes. That's because they've never been taught how to use their brains. I used to advertise my seminars as how to use your brain for fun and profit. Most people don't even know how to use it for fun, much less than how to use it for profit. <laughs> What's the secret of power? Do you all know how dumb the average guy is? Well, mathematically, by definition, half of them are even dumber than that. <laughs> now, now, once you understand that, you can start your own religion and get as rich as Bob, or L. Ron Hubbard, or Roger Dees. You can have 93 Rolls Royces, though, if you just keep that in mind. Half of them are even dumber than average. And as if that's not bad enough uh, for the philosopher to contemplate. Uh, if you want to make money, it's good news, but if you're a philosopher, it's bad news. On top of that, we've got an incredibly large number of people nowadays who are just plain full of shit. I mean, you notice that? Movie stars, they're all full of shit these days. You can get them to endorse anything. Uh, movie stars will endorse anything, and baseball players are even worse. Now, baseball players will get up there on television with their bare face hanging out and say, I never thought I'd like eating lepers, turds. <laughs> 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 So we get all these stupid people, and then we get all these celebrities who are full of shit, and then if you look around, you'll find out that at least 30% of the population are batshit crazy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, in Santa Cruz, it's about 60%. <laughs> so you say, hey, you, you got the just plain stupid, you got the ones who are full of shit, and you got the ones who are batshit crazy, and now we end up with a vice president who's all three at once. Well, my attitude towards the readers is an absolutely sadistic one. <laughs> use the word. He, coming, said to Ezra Bound once, You damn say this, I can see what you're up to. You're trying to force your readers to think. Well, that is a pretty sadistic thing to do. <laughs> if you go to school, the first thing they teach you is to stop thinking. All children are born, as uh, Buckminster Fuller noticed, uh, all children are born naked, hungry, and intensely curious. Being a parent uh, consists chiefly of following them around the house showing, don't put that in your mouth. <laughs> That's because the oral bio-survival circuit turns on right after birth, and the first thing they want is mommy's titty. And the second thing they want is to test the rest of the world to see if it's as good as mommy's titty. <laughs> <laughs> this is good as mommy's titty. Now, you know what their carpet tastes like, right? Of course, everybody here knows what the carpet tastes like. You know what the dirt and the flower pot tastes like? You know what everything tastes like. 
because this is the first circuit of the nervous system that's activated. If you want to know about the other seven circuits, why my book Prometheus Rising, that's what I'm here for, is to sneak in subtle little books <laughs> my books for the public. As soon as they learn to talk, as, uh, as I was saying, uh, they stop testing everything by putting it in their mouth, and they try to find out by wiggling their mouth, and they figure out these sounds that grown-ups make have meaning. They start asking questions. And uh, parenting then consists of saying, well, gee, I don't know. I'll go look it up in the encyclopedia. <laughs> they find the most fascinating questions. Why is the sky blue? Uh, well, gee, it's always been blue. It's not back as I can remember. And then actually, why does it rain? Well, it's uh, the excess moisture in the clouds, I think, or something like that. But then they want to know, uh, why is America here and not in Africa? Well, uh, <laughs> and... Uh, the function of the public school system is to put a stop to that. If we had a population uh, who kept the curiosity of small children, people would be going around trying to find out everything for themselves. And uh, such intense curiosity is likely to tumble the whole edifice of uh, authoritarian society. There's a bridge in Amsterdam. Well, there are a lot of bridges in Amsterdam, aren't there? Yeah. There's one particular bridge in Amsterdam. You go over it and you find yourself on e tunnel. And there's a great coffee house there, which has a sign in it that says, No hard drugs, please, which I love. It's, the, it's so civilized. It's so made a It's the essence of Dutchness. No hard drugs, please. Isn't that like, it reminds me of when Nancy Reagan was popularizing Just Say No. And Timothy Leary said, we can be more polite than Republicans. Say, no, thank you. <laughs> and that says, no, hot drugs, please. This is a, a typical Amsterdam coffee house, which means that you can buy a hashish cigarette with your coffee, which does do a lot to add to the flavor of coffee. <laughs> and it does a lot for the chocolate buns, too. Uh, but no, hot drugs, please. That's, uh, that's so civilized and, and Dutch. Because really, you're sitting around in one of those nice Amsterdam coffee shops with a bunch of friends drinking coffee, blowing bread, <laughs> relaxed, at peace with the world. Uh, you think, uh, gee, every, every, someday the whole world will be like Amsterdam. <laughs> That'd be wonderful. And you don't want somebody in the corner or they work something, they bring the shove with evil head. It lowers the whole public. <laughs> so, no, a lot of drugs, please. Uh, I love Amsterdam. But anyway, there's a bridge you cross over there. It says under the bridge, abuse of authority comes as no surprise. <laughs> One of the most profound political statements I have ever encountered. Abuse of authority comes as no surprise. And authority cannot survive question, especially authority that's based on nothing to bluff. And since governments are based principally on force and deception, democratic governments are based chiefly on deception, other governments on force. In democratic governments, if you get too uppity, they give up on the deception and they resort to brute force again, as a lot of us found out in the 60s. Those who didn't find out in the 60s will find out in the 90s, because we're going to have a rerun of the 60s. And uh, so they don't want people going around asking questions. So the question is, how do you stop this natural human curiosity and this incredible intelligence that humans are born with? Well, humans are born with a very high IQ compared to chimpanzees, orangutans, dogs, cats, etc. So public schools were founded, and uh, human IQ began decreasing immediately. There were was, was actually studies done, quoted in Paul Goodman's book, Growing Up Absurd. Paul Goodman, Growing Up Absurd. Just so you don't think I'm making this up. There were actually studies done in many schools in, in uh, the big cities where IQ immeasurably decreases from the entering of grammar school to the graduation from high school. The longer they're there, the dumber they get. And... Uh, uh, some people think that's an accident or an oversight or a mistake. But that is the function of the public school. The function of the public schools is to stop thinking. They're just to teach people the citizen level of intelligence. They want us to go back before the primate level. I see a few puzzled frowns. Citizen comes from the fact <laughs> it means uh, to repeat like a parish. Uh, Citizenism is the habit of repeating whatever you hear. All brainwashing movements are based on getting people to repeat things together. Like, sing a heil, sing a heil, sing a heil. After eight years of grammar school and four years of high school, most people are ready for that sort of thing because they have been taught you never think, you never judge, you never trust your senses, you never report what you see, hear, smell, or any way surmise from the environment. You repeat what the teacher tells you. If they catch you thinking, you get a lower mark. I, uh, I one time got a C on a term paper at Brooklyn Polytechnic. 
It was the longest term paper in the whole class. I checked that out. It had more footnotes than any other paper. They were all accurate footnotes. All the proper apparatus of scholarship. And why did I get a C? I guess the teacher, why did I get such a long mark? These guys are all these little short papers got A's. And this C for this big, long philosophical paper. He said, engineers don't write like that. You must have plagiarized it. He caught me thinking. That's the one thing they can't stand is if they catch you thinking, they've got to find some excuse to punish you. You're not supposed to think. You're supposed to repeat what you hear. And almost all books are written on that principle. Books are written, this is the truth. I found out the truth. I will not explain it in chapter one. I'll explain a little more in chapter two. In chapter three, I'll summarize chapter one and chapter two to make sure you get it. Then in chapter four, I'll tell you a little more. Then in chapter five, I'll repeat it a different way. Then in chapter six, I'll tell it to you again. Now you better believe it. I've proven it. Now go and tell all your friends to buy this book so they'll learn the truth too. And people who have been through our educational system, they think, they think they're thinking. 